Good morning. Good morning to you all. We are delighted to see you here. On behalf of the leadership here at the Pinnacle Church Christ, we want to welcome you to the Pinnacle Church where we are living and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We are delighted to see each of you this morning. I want to say greetings to those that are joining us via the live stream. We are live streaming our services this morning out on uh, our social media pages, both YouTube and Facebook. If you're out on Facebook, uh, please be sure and give us a like. And if you're out on uh, the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe while you're there. That'll help us to increase our reach and to uh, reach even more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning and you're visiting, we want you to know that you are our honored and welcome guests. We're so glad that God sent you our way today. And uh, to acknowledge that, uh, we ask that you do us one favor. In the seat back in front of you, you'll find uh, a little card, if you will take a moment and fill that out. Or uh, you see the little QR code that's on the placard in the seat back in front of you. If you'll scan that with your smartphone, it will take you to a spot uh, where you can fill that information in. Or an even easier way to do that is to simply uh, send us a text message to that number that's being displayed on your screen. Uh, if you'll do that, whichever way works best for you works for us. Uh, we ask that you do that for no other reason uh, than to adequately acknowledge your presence and to let you know how delighted we are that God sent you our way. And if you're here this morning and you're looking for a church home, uh, your search is ended. Uh, we would be delighted to have you to be a part of the family of faith here at the Pinnacle Church, to roll up your sleeves and get busy with us as we work uh, in our communities and uh, trying to make a difference for good for the Lord. Um, do like so many of your friends and neighbors have done. Do like old Davis Chastine has done. Davis, hold your hand up there. Hello, Davis. We're glad to have you. Davis has made it known that he desires to place membership here at the Pinnacle Church, and we are delighted to have him. Uh, fine young man. Be sure and get to know him if you have not already. Uh, do like Sister Sue Click has done, made it known that she desires to place membership here at the Pinnacle Church. Miss Sue, where are you? Somewhere there, and if you, there she is, all right. We are delighted to have Miss Sue with us. I see you over there, and uh, be sure and get to know her and let her know how glad you are that we have her as a part of the Pinnacle Church family. There are others uh, who are thinking about it or who may have uh, some questions. Any question that we can answer, we'll be more than happy to uh, answer for you. See me, see Chuck, any of the elders. Uh, we would love to have you here uh, with us as a part of the Pinnacle Church of Christ. Hey, don't forget about all of um, our online content that we have uh, out on our social media pages. We live stream our services uh, today, this evening at 5 p.m. We'll uh, have our Sunday evening sermon that will go out at 5 o'clock. Our Wednesday class discussions are live streamed as well as in person here in the building at 6.30. And of course, our Thursday morning uh, Bible class at 10.30. Any and all of that is available and it's all designed to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. And so be sure and take uh, advantage of that. Our Pinnacle Kids series is, is coming up. Uh, actually, we're in the middle of it right now. The, the summer series, which is great stories of the Bible. And we just encourage you to get your kids to be a part of that, your grandkids, nieces, nephews, uh, all those great stories of the Bible that you've heard that uh, were meaningful to you. Um, those will help our young people to not only uh, find some very entertaining and, and thought-provoking stories, but they teach a principle about God's help, uh, even in times of trouble. And so that's going on throughout the summer, and we encourage you to take advantage uh, of that. Our Thursday morning Bible class um, has just started a new series. We're about two, three weeks into uh, God's principles of sowing and reaping. Is it true that you reap what you sow? Well, sometimes, maybe, maybe not. No, what you find is that God's principle has existed for many years, and it continues to be something that guides us. God's principles of sowing and reaping, we're studying that on Thursday mornings, and we invite you to come out and to be a part of that. Hey, one final thing, if you're looking for an opportunity to uh, sign up, to volunteer, there are opportunities available. Um, you can be a part of the worship service. Gentlemen, if you'd like to serve or lead a prayer, uh, do the communion service, the meditation, uh, let us know. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Ladies, if you'd like to be involved uh, in any area of uh, the church service, uh, there are opportunities there uh, for you to sign up as well. 
Uh, sometimes we say, yeah, there's nothing for me to do. No, there's something for everyone to do, uh, but you have to make it known that you desire to be involved, and this is your opportunity. So please take advantage of that and sign up today. It's great to have you here with us today. I want to read a quick card um, of thanks. This comes from Louise Coleman. Louise is uh, the neighbor of our sister Sandra Jackson. Uh, Louise is also the mother of uh, the young uh, girl that was tragically uh, shot and killed in our city uh, just a few weeks back. Uh, many of you have sent cards to Louise and uh, made contact with her, and she sends this card saying, thanks so much. The phrase is simple, and the words are few, but behind them is a whole lot of appreciation. Thank you, Pinnacle Church. May God bless you, uh, each and every one of you, for your kindness. And this comes from Louise uh, Coleman. There are so many that are going through times of difficulty, uh, like Louise, and others that are recovering. Our brother Charles Harrison is home watching as he recuperates from surgery last week. Uh, many, many others that are on our prayer list. But this morning, uh, as we prepare to go into our worship service, would you bow with me in prayer? Father God, we're truly thankful for this day. Yet another Lord's Day that we come out to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, as we offer up our gifts of song and praise, Father, we just pray that all that we do and all that we say would renown to your glory and honor. Father, we pray for those among our number who are going through times of illness. Uh, we ask that if it be your will, you would work through the doctors and the nurses to bring the healing that they stand in need of. And especially, Heavenly Father, for those that are going through times of grief and loss, uh, we just ask that you would give them the comfort and the peace that passeth all understanding. Be with each of us as we worship you today, Father. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we sing this song. <clears throat> I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God and be exalted. The Lord live and blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The, the Lord and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord live, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Be seated, please. Our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. <clears throat> After the next, this next song, we'll have our communion. <clears throat> when my love to Christ grows weak, when Simone. 
today. He and his wife Ann are at home watching and we solicit your prayers for Bob and, and Ann that they'll be back with us quickly. If you did not get a chance to pick up one of the communion packets, the brothers are passing down the aisle. If you'll just raise your hand and indicate we'll get one of those to you. We come to the part of the worship service that is so very important. And the temptation is always to try to uh, capture the moment or to make something um, saliable or say something that would uh, prompt you to think on the pain and the agony that our Lord suffered as he made sacrifice for us out on the tree. And I've heard so many different kinds of tall tales that don't help you concentrate but take you further from that. I just happen to think that maybe what we ought to do is to reflect on the words of the Bible. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and following these words, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the bread. Gracious Father, we're so thankful for your sacrifice and establish this perpetual memorial that we would always remember and never forget all that you've done for us. Father, we pray that you would bless us that as we take this bread, which reminds us of your broken body, that we would do it in a worthy manner. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
And after the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup, for he eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's give thanks for the cup. Father, how thankful we are for that sacrifice that was made. Our Lord suffered and died there on the cross, and there in his dying and agony, he shed his precious blood. Father, we pray that as we take this cup, this fruit of the vine today, that we would be mindful of his suffering and death, and all that he did to pay the price for our salvation. We pray that as we take this fruit of the vine, we would do so in a worthy manner. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, we also have as a part of our worship and praise to God an opportunity to give. Uh, the Bible tells us that when it comes to our giving that uh, we should not do so uh, out of a sense of compulsion, um, out of a sense of obligation, but do so cheerfully. Um, we have an opportunity to give, and their methodology for doing that is varied. You can use the, the QR code that's listed in your bulletin and do it electronically. Some of you find that convenient. Uh, others uh, want to mail it in. You certainly can do that. The address is listed there uh, on the screen. For those of you at home that want to participate, uh, you can do that. Or uh, there is a receptacle as you leave the building today uh, where you can deposit uh, your gifts and contributions. However you decide to do that, that's up to you and the Lord. We appreciate all that you do. Uh, appreciate so much how generous you have been in our building campaign. And uh, take just a moment to say that our thermometer out in the hallway shows that we have just about uh, reached the $2 million mark. Uh, we anticipate that before the end of the year, we will hit that. But you'll also notice that on the thermometer, it goes all the way up to the top. Uh, and so we've Hope and pray that we will continue to make that push as God blesses us uh, to move into a new building, a new location. There's some exciting things happening uh, here at Pinnacle Church. Let's pray for the offering. Gracious Father, we are so thankful for all that you give us. Uh, we can never repay you for all that you've done, but we come today to uh, return a portion to you to say thank you. Father, we pray that you would bless the, each giver in the spirit in which he or she is giving. That You'll use these gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without him, dearest joy would be. Anywhere with Jesus is a crowd of Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still. Anywhere with Jesus is a house 
shouts of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere, Jesus, I can safely go. Anywhere, Jesus, over land and sea, telling souls in darkness of salvation free. Ready as he summons me to go or stay. Anywhere with Jesus when he points the way. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep. When the darkened shadows round about me creep, knowing I shall wake and never more to roam, anywhere with Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Open our Bibles together to Matthew chapter 13. We are glad that everybody has joined us today. Those of you who are here in person, we're thankful also for those that keep tuning in online. We have a growing number of folks there. I know our sister Mary Helen Oliver is watching uh, down in Pine Bluff. We got our sister Brianne watching in Utah. We've got Randy and Beth keeping Lake Hamilton safe from the Russian Navy. Glad about that. We've got a, a growing number of folks watching from the state of Ohio. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I know the Sanders and the Rogers bunch, they're watching. I'm just glad that the internet has finally come to Ohio. And there are at least five people smart enough to work it there. That's good to know. As the Bible says, condescend to men of low estate, Roger, and that's what we're doing with those Ohioans. George MacDonald said these words, man finds it hard to get what he wants because he does not want the best. God finds it hard to give because he would give the best and man will not take it. And so it is. On March the 3rd, 1995, a 38-year-old man was walking across his job at a warehouse in Rosemont, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. He tried to get there against all common sense by cutting across eight lanes of the tri-state tollway. Never a good idea. After he made it across the four northbound lanes, the wind blew off his hat. Instead of chalking it off as a loss, he turned back toward the northbound lanes and started chasing it. And he was struck by a semi-trailer truck and killed. A person can lose everything by chasing after nothing. And a person can gain everything by refusing to chase after nothing. In two brief parables, Jesus calls his followers to spend all we have on all that matters. Matthew 13, beginning in verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. I probably am at a bigger handicap to understand Jesus' teachings about fine pearls and gems and jewelry than anybody on this earth. I might have less of an interest in jewelry and diamonds and gold than anybody. The only thing I'm interested in are watches. I'm crazy about watches. 
Any of you have a watch you want to get rid of? I'm your man. I'll make you an offer. But we had on the radio the other day something that was kind of interesting. There was this young man named William, which I guess wouldn't mean anything to you, except his grandmother is Sissy from Sissy's Log Cabin. So he walked in, and I looked at him, and you know he stuck his hand out and introduced himself. I said, Sissy's Log Cabin, because life is too short for ordinary jewelry. He kind of looked at me like, what a smart aleck. He said, that's not really an Arkansas accent. That sounds more Louisiana. I said, what do I know? All you people sound alike to me. Acre said, you people? I said, yeah, you people south of the Mason-Dixon line. Y'all sound like you got peanut butter in your mouth. Blah, 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 blah. And I know everybody from up north sounds like they got a clothespin on their nose, so touche. But we're not here to argue about accents. We're here to talk about jewelry. Because <laughs> life's too short for old never jewelry. That brings us to one of my favorite stories for the, from the Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard. And Kierkegaard tells a story of thieves who broke into a jewelry store. But they didn't steal all the stuff in the jewelry store. They didn't get the gold, and they didn't get the diamonds, and they didn't get the Rolexes. They didn't bother anything. Instead, they just switched the price tags and put different price tags on different items. They put the high price tags on cheap merchandise, and the low price tags on valuable gems. And for weeks, nobody noticed. People were buying cheap jewelry for exorbitant prices and rare jewels for spare change out of their pockets. And Kierkegaard's point is obvious. Sometimes we have difficulty discerning between what is valuable and what is worthless. And that was true in his day, and it remains true in ours. Kierkegaard's parable and Christ's gospel have something in common. Both rearrange all the price tags. The first is last. The last is first. Up is down. Down is up. We love those who hate us. We pray for those who persecute us. We deny self and serve others. We give generously to all without seeking credit for it. We forgive even when people aren't sorry, and we refuse to seek revenge. We follow Jesus, and we give up our rights. These are not natural actions, by the way, but they're transformative actions. And in the process of doing these things to which Christ has called us, we end up losing our lives only to find them. Thomas Merton says, the gift of ourselves in total submission to God is a sacrifice in which, far from losing anything, we gain everything and recover in a more perfect mode of possession even what we seem to have lost. For at the very moment when we give ourselves to God, God gives himself to us. When someone like Merton says something like that, you need to listen because he lived it in a really remarkable way. Thomas Merton came from an elite artistic family and he had any path in life open to him. He could have been anything. He could have done anything. His brilliant mind was honed at Cambridge and Columbia. He hobnobbed and socialized among the best and brightest of English society, of New York society. He rubbed elbows with some of the richest people on the planet. 
He denied himself no pleasure or experience. But like so often in doing all of this, Merton looked at himself in the mirror and he says, what am I doing? What am I accomplishing? My life is empty. It's meaningless. I'm not helping anybody. I'm not doing anything that's significant. I'm just going from fun to fun to fun. And he thought there's got to be more to life than that. Realizing that the very purpose of modern life was to run away from God, Merton did the opposite. He ran to God. He moved from New York City to a monastery in Kentucky that required a vow of silence. And when I say a vow of silence, I mean they go days and weeks at the Gethsemane Monastery and no one talks to anybody. You pray, but you're silent the rest of the time. And that's what Merton bought. His friends were certain that he'd lost his mind. Who leaves New York City to go to Kentucky? Okay, who? Yeah, that's for you, Wallace. Unless John Calipari is paying you massive amounts of NIL money, okay? But Merton didn't get any of that. He traded money for poverty. He traded society for cornfields. But he did something else in all of that. As people said to him, look at everything you're giving up. To Merton, it seemed like liberation. He said, basically, I'm shedding all of these things that aren't bringing me closer to God, but they're just substituting for a relationship to God. This is what Merton said after a few years at the monastery. He said, everything in modern city life is calculated to keep man from entering into himself and thinking about spiritual things, even with the best of spiritual intentions. A person finds himself exhausted and deadened and debased by the constant noise of machines and loudspeakers, the dead air and glaring lights of offices and shops, the everlasting suggestions of advertising and propaganda. Merton just walked away from all of it, kind of like Francis of Assisi had done centuries and centuries before. And Merton would spend the remainder of his life living in very close fellowship with God, understanding that what the kingdom of heaven was offering to him was worth more than everything that he had. Thomas Merton would spend the rest of his life figuring out where the price tags belonged. Here's my question to you today. Have you given any thought to that lately? Has somebody switched the price tags in your world and you're paying high, high prices for things that at the end of the day mean about this much? And do you realize that the things that matter the most in most cases are free because God is offering them to you? Don't let people tell you what is valuable and what is not. Don't let the world do that because the world doesn't know anything about it. But God does. God understands what's valuable. God understands that life is not meant to be spent going from one experience to the next experience to the next experience. Life is not about just one endless crusade to find pleasure and to go ahead and satisfy every urge and every desire we have. That's not why we're alive. We're here to glorify God and to enjoy him for the rest of our lives. Thomas Merton understood that. 
His friends that remained in high society and in the world of the upper echelons of the business community and academia, most of them never understood that. But Merton did. And Merton would die a happy, contented, satisfied servant of God. And friend, at the end of the day, there's no greater epitaph than we could give to ourselves than that. One of my favorite authors is Philip Yancey. And he made this observation about his own life. He said, I've learned that when I choose to follow Jesus in ways large or small, what seems like a sacrifice is actually a benefit. I am the one who benefits. When I swallow my pride and apologize to someone I've wronged, I feel a flood of relief. When I give anonymously, as Jesus commanded, I experience more satisfaction. When I resist temptation and invest instead in the hard work of marriage, I gain. The Gospels repeat one statement by Jesus more than any other. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for Jesus' sake will find it. I ask myself how I lose my life for Jesus' sake. I do not live in a monastery, and I experience no real persecution for my faith. I can only apply that principle in far less dramatic ways, in mundane acts of self-denial. For me, that has meant several hundred incidents of being willing to give up my own desires for those of my wife. It has included uncomfortable acts, such as seeking out a sick, whining friend in a hospital. It has meant spending time with emotionally needy people who want to ramble while I'm trying to get work done. It has meant a constant scrutiny of the use of my money. Even so, Jesus is not calling me to do these things with a resigned sense of duty. Rather, his statement contains the paradoxical suggestion that if we lose our lives for his sake, we will find them in the very process of losing them. So what does this mean to you this morning? Are you going to search for meaning and happiness in things that cannot deliver them? That's what Merton was doing. You're going to find happiness in money. You're going to find happiness in pleasure. Or will you find your life by losing it in service and devotion to Jesus? That's one of the paradoxical rules that God has built into this world. If you seek to preserve your life, you'll lose it. If you give your life away in service to Jesus, you'll find it. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 16 and 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The answer, friend, is nothing. But if you recognize that the things that truly matter in life are the things that are free and the things that people pay exorbitant prices for at the end of the day don't mean a single thing, well, you're going to be ahead of the game. Quit letting the world switch the price tags in your life. You let God arrange the prices as he deems fit. And then, and only then, will you know true happiness. In just a minute, we're going to sing a song of invitation. And as always, the invitation of Jesus is calling out to us to respond in various ways. 
for the person who's not a Christian. In faith, repentance, and baptism, that person can be born again of the water and the Spirit. Having the blood of Jesus cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To the Christian who's wandered away from the Lord, there's always the opportunity to come back. And for those of us that are maybe somewhere in the middle, we be reminded to respond to the Lord this way. Put first things first. Quit straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. And don't let the world tell you what matters. You let God tell you what matters. Today, if the invitation of Jesus is calling to you, we invite you to come as we stand and as we sing. Christ, your broken life, so far by sin, he will create a new, faithful again. Your empty, wasted years, he will restore, and your iniquities thank you for this Lord today that we've had the opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and, and again to focus our mind upon you on this first day of the week. Thank you Lord that we can do that and be able to do that many more years in our life. Father thank you for your love for us to do what you've done to send your son to this earth and die on that cruel cross shedding his blood and giving us away. We have the perfect sacrifice to be for us to be with you. Thank you for that. Thank you for Brother Chuck and John, the preachers here, and we ask you to be with them as they teach and preach your word, that they stay close to your word. Father, help us to do that every day of our lives, to take your word within our hearts and minds and use it and pattern our lives. And again, as we go out into the world this week, each of us, help us to be the kind of example we need to be for you wherever we're at, that people can see you. We are a living book out there in the world. Help us to do that in a way that's pleasing to you. Please forgive us for we fail you. Many times we don't do what you've asked. And again, Lord, that we can get up and go on with our lives and do the things we know to be right. Again, thank you for the blessing you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The common law for each other, a common gift. To the Savior, a common bond, holding us to the Lord. 